Let's first check a few settings on our software. Go up to Edit, Settings, and make sure the Show Punch Tools and the View Toolbar is turned on by make, putting an X beside of it. This will make sure all of our digitizing tools are available when we go into the software. You can also go over here and change your units from metric to inches. And the next thing we're going to do is select the hoop we're going to be working in. Edit, select hoop. We're going to be using the standard hoop, the tubular hoop, and we're going to be using the large one, the 300 by 200. So select that hoop. OK. Now let's go get our design. Over to the left is a star, and that is going to be your add design. And that brings up all of the categories that are built into the software. We're going to go down to quilting, and we're going to select pattern 005. Click on it, select, and it brings it into the window. Now we want to create this, make it a little bit larger but we need to be able to see what size it is. So if you'll click off of the pattern, click back on the pattern, in the bottom left, you're going to see the information of the pattern. We have the number of stitches, how many colors, and you'll see the size. I wanna make this about a five and a half inch. So I'm gonna click and drag on any of the four corners and just make that a little larger. And mine is now almost five and a half inches, so that's good. Just going to click on it and move it back to center. Now let's go get our other pattern, go back to the star, and we're going to go to fantasy, and we're going to select the fire pot here, the 007 pattern. Select, and it brings it into the center of our design. You can click off of it to see the pattern. But we want to make these colors represent the colors that we're actually going to be stitching this out in. So if you will select the pot again, and sometimes if you click on it, it's, it's hard to grab one of the patterns or another. So just click off and click back on until you get the, the pot design. We need to go to our properties box and that is over to the right, which is the white arrow. If you click on that, you'll see the properties box and the sequence box has opened up. So let's click on sequence. Right now it shows the quilted background and the pot design as one whole piece, but we actually want to be able to open that up so that we can change the different colors. So to do that, we're going to ungroup this design. Somewhere in your software, you're going to look over to the left, and you'll probably see this line, a broken line. That means that there's more tools underneath here that just can't be shown. So if you'll just click on that line and drag, you'll see that toolbar will pop up. And that's where our group and ungroup is going to be. So we want to ungroup this. And see what happens? We've now broken it down into the colors that are in this pattern. So let's go assign the colors that we have on our needles to what we want to actually stitch. If you look at the bottom of the screen, these are the eight thread colors that are going to be on the machine. This represents the eight needles that are on the machine. But right now, these are not the colors that I'm actually going to use in my design. So let's go change these colors so that this matches the color of the threads that I actually have on the machine. We're going to go up to Machine, Needles. And color number one, the color that I have on my machine, is a light gray. So when you click on, and I'll, get, I'll do that one more time, you're going to click on the color swatch. And it's going to bring up thread colors. Now you can go up to the palettes and you can choose your brand of thread if you want to. Um, I just find that I can work fine if it's just um, any brand of thread and I can just pick the color. So the first thing I wanna do is find a light gray. So 
but let's just go with this color, select, and you'll see how that's changed here. And it'll change down here once we finish all of these and get out of this window. So the next color on my needles is white. I'm going to leave that alone. So the third color is a medium gray that I'm going to use. I'm just going to scroll until I find the gray colors. So there's a medium gray. And the color number four is going to be a darker gray. So I can just select that. Color number five on my machine is black thread. Color number six is going to be orange. So I'm just going to choose orange. And color number seven is going to be a, a purple. So I can just go choose the closest purple that I want to use. We'll just use lilac. And then color number eight is cherry red. So that's what I have on my machine. So we're going to leave it set up like that. When I click OK, you will now see that the colors at the bottom change. This now represents the colors that I actually have on the needles on the machine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and assign these colors to our pattern. So if you click on the quilting in the background, I want that to be stitched with a black thread. And my black thread is on needle number five. So I'm just going to come down and click needle number five. And you'll see that's now changed to black. So the next color is white, and that is on needle number two. Click that. The next color is my uh, light gray, and that's going to be on needle number three. The fourth is a darker gray, and that's on needle number four. The fifth color is black, and that's needle number five. Then this color, which are the flames, that's going to be an orange color, and that's going to be on needle number six. And then I have black here, needle number five. Then I have the um, little dots that are coming up. The first one is going to be purple, so I want needle number seven. And then the next one is going to be a red, and I want that on needle number eight. And we do have more colors right here, so I just scroll down. So this one I'm going to bring needle number seven. It's going to be purple. And then I'm going to go back here and make that red. So now I have assigned my thread colors that are on my needles to my software and I have, a th have assigned the thread colors that are going to stitch from the needles in my software. So this is the order it's going to stitch out. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create that sewing line so that once we have this stitched we can lay a piece of fabric down and it will all be stitched in the hoop and then we'll just have to turn it. So we're going to use some of our digitizing tools for that. If you will go up to this area up here, these are our digitizing tools. And when you click on the down arrow, you get options. We can do a fill stitch. We can do a satin stitch. We can do what's called a steel stitch, which is sort of an outline satin stitch. We can do a running stitch or we can manually make our stitches. We're going to do a running stitch, so select Run, and this is going to give us a straight stitch line out on the, the perimeter of our design. We're going to create a line so that when we lay the back fabric down, it will stitch around and everything will be completed in the hoop. So to do that, we have to leave an area for turning in this area. So we're going to start our line about right here. So click, go across, and click again where you want that line to be. Come up, and notice when I'm moving this line, see how it breaks and then it gets straight? So if you want to keep the line exactly straight, just watch that as you're creating this line. So come up to the top and click, go across, click, 
come down and click and then we're going to go over <clears throat> maybe about a third and click touch enter on the keyboard and we've now created our line so if you're in sequence the sequence window you'll notice at the bottom we now have this line down here and you want to select the color thread that you're going to stitch this with I'm using an orange fabric so I want my stitching line to be orange so I'm just going to click on it at the bottom of the sequence window go over to needle number six which is where I have my orange thread and click on it now if you click off the design you'll see that we're ready now to load this and go over to our machine and stitch it. Go up to File, Save As, and you're going to navigate to where your USB drive is. Click on that. And the first thing we're going to do is save this as a PXF file. And a PXF file is your working file. It's your pure file so that if you have to go back and make any changes to your pattern, you can do it easily with this. So let's name this Halloween Mug Rug and save it. And now we need to go back to File, Save As, and we want to save this as our stitch file now. So if you click on the down arrow, you'll see these are all of the different file formats that you can save as. We're going to go up to the Tajima Stitch Files, DST. We're going to click on that, and we're going to name it Halloween Mug Rug, and click Save. We're now ready to take our USB stick and go to our machine and stitch this out. To stitch out our design, let's navigate to our USB stick and select our pattern. Mine is on page two, Halloween mug rug set. And now we need to assign the needles with the thread on to our pattern. So these are the colors in my pattern, or the thread changes, and these are the needles that are on the machine. So color number one is the background, and I want that to pull from needle number five because that's where I actually have my black thread. Color number two is going to be white, and that is on my needle number two. So just touch needle number two. Now color number three is a light gray, and I have that on needle number one. So I'm going to touch needle number one. Color four is on needle number three. Color five is black, and I have my black thread on needle number five. Color six is the orange, the flames, and I have orange on color number six, so I'm going to select number six. Needle number seven is also going to be a black, and I have my black on needle number five, so I'm going to touch that. Now, if I page down, you'll see I have more colors. So color number eight, I want that to be red, and I have red on my needle number eight, so I'm going to touch that. Color number nine is going to be purple, and my purple thread is on needle number seven, so I'm going to touch seven. Needle number 10, that's the very last stitching of the pattern, and that's the little dots up there. And I want to pull those from color number 7. Now, needle number 11, this is our line, our stitching line, to put the fabric down so that we can create the in-the-hoop rug. So I need to create a stop in between color number 10 and 11. So the machine will stop stitching and allow me to lay the fabric down on top. So I'm going to touch needle number 10, the one above where I want it to stop. And I come over here and touch the little stop symbol, and you'll see it's put a symbol in there. So now when I'm stitching, it'll, the machine will stitch colors 1 through 10. It will stop, 
and allow me time to come in and lay that backing piece down before it stitches color number 11. Set. And now we need to select our hoop. We're using the largest hoop, which is tubular number one. Set. And now we need to position our pattern in the middle of our frame. And I always like to work from the center. You could work and position it to the upper left or right. That's a personal choice. But I like to put it in the center of the hoop. When I touch set, now I'm going to use those arrows and move the crosshairs. We're going to use the arrows on the screen to align our crosshair, our laser crosshair, with the center of our hoop. So just use those arrows to move that crosshair so that it's in the center of your hoop. Now that we've used our arrows to set our crosshair, set, it's going to trace around the pattern and it will actually show you the area of the pattern. We're now ready to begin our stitching, so all we have to do is touch start. Our machine has now stopped, so it will allow us to take our 8x8 eight eight piece of fabric, our backing fabric, and we're going to lay it down on top, right sides together. Start your machine. We're going to take this out of the hoop now. We're going to trim around the outside area of this stitching, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're going to turn this right side out. Turn this right side out. You can either hand sew the opening closed or you can choose to top stitch around all four edges to close that opening. 